In both 2008 and 2012, Barack Obama was in the unenviable position of being the underdog both times. In 2008, Hillary Clinton was the heavy favorite. In 2012, Mitt Romney was about to spend $100 million more on television advertising, and Obama had had to navigate the country through a very difficult economic crisis that was left to him. So in both cases, he had to be a bit of an insurgent. Uh, that meant that both that he had to be the driver of change in the narrative of the campaign, but it also that meant that he had to be smarter and more innovative in terms of his, his purchases online and offline. We saw in 2012, for example, that Obama ended up spending $90 million less on television advertising than Romney, but effectively doing more ads to more highly targeted people. And he did so because he had a group of geniuses working out of something called The Cave, who were developing new algorithms and new approaches to doing very targeted television advertising that I think now can be applied in the business world, both in the United States and in Europe. So what Obama really did was threw out the old playbook. He threw out the way of thinking about how to do advertising, and he built something brand new. He, do it, he did it in 2008. He did it in 2012. There was nothing derivative about it. It was highly insurgent, and it was highly innovative. I think the most important development in communications over the last five years has really been in the explosion of social media. There are 7.2 billion people on planet Earth, and well over a billion of these use Facebook. About half a billion use Twitter. In China, they have their own platforms which are being used by upwards of a billion people. So what this means is that this social media now interacts in a very personal way uh, with the people who use it and, frankly, with old traditional media forms. So I think that if you're a company, you have to figure out how to maximize the positive and minimize the negative effect of social media in your marketplace for your company and for your products. Going forward, I think that the level of disruption that social media has, has created is only going to be surpassed by big data. Big data, the application of massive computing power to draw, draw out intelligence, uh, has oftentimes been used for political purposes. Uh, I think that going forward it's going to be a much, much more mainstream business tool. And it's going to change the way that companies think about advertising. It's going to allow them to become much, much more precise. But I also think that this is going to create some very interesting challenges in terms of privacy policy, especially in Europe, where there are a different set of values around privacy than there are in the United States. You know, in the United States, I think our most coveted value is the freedom of expression, free speech. My sense, my sense, is that in Europe, one of the most coveted values is that of privacy. So I see an inherent tension between the the continued development of technology and the application of big data and advertising and some of the distinctly European values around privacy. And so I think it's going to be very interesting and difficult to reconcile these two. I think that, look, if there's anything that I can impart for the, both the Babylon project as well as for the Italian market more broadly. It's that it's not the strongest who survive. It's not the most intelligent who survive. It's those most adaptable to change. You know, I think Italy was a great industrial age power, but I'm worried about it, frankly, in the information age. There are very high levels of unemployment, particularly among young people. And I think that there's some necessary uh, adaptability that needs to come to the Italian market that has been too slow to come. I think when I think about the impact of digital, I think that so much of the impact of digital in European markets and in Italy specifically has not necessarily benefited Italian firms as much as it has, say, American firms. And when I think about the growth of new innovations in areas like genomics, robotics, big data, cyber, it's an open question whether Italy benefits from these innovations or not through the creation of new firms and new jobs. 
And so my key message, my one takeaway for everybody is remember, it's not the strongest that survive, nor the most intelligent, but those most adaptable to inevitable change.